global and local trend analysis the path forward sustainable development requires human ingenuity people are the most important resource and that's when dan shachtman is an israeli american professor the 79th section of the united nations general assembly onga took place at the united nations headquarters in new york this year the theme for the debate was leaving no one behind acting together for the advancement of peace sustainable development and human dignity for present and future generations some of the concerns were the unrest and the kinetic actions in the middle east between israel and hamas hezbollah and iran the ongoing russia ukraine war and crisis in sudan climate change as observed from several cases of flood and recently the helene hurricane causing various humanitarian crises in the u.s various political actors are very much involved in convincing the electorate on their various strategy and policies and means humanitarian crisis from hurricane and multilateral u.s global diplomatic relations in the u.s locally there were several concerns on the just concluded off cycle election in Edo State and Imo State, as several allegations of irregularities resurfaces. Also, the Nigerian 64th Independence Celebration, themed reflecting on the past and inspiring the future, occurred amidst clamor for accountability and good governance, as Nigeria's president. Bola Ahmed Tunubu highlighted various achievements of his administration and pledged commitment to development, especially those focused on opportunities for youths. So, my fellow advocates, here we are again. So, um, before we delve into the international scene, you know, we've yeah. talked so much about um, the youth. So, I'm going to say some things about some of the uh, achievements the president highlighted. He talked about okay. killing over the military was able to kill or dislodge over 300 members of Boko Haram bandits yeah. and some other terror group and yeah. even though the um, the for, for recently the very recently the chief of defense staff uh, general Christopher Musa mm -hmm. said a lot of things about these their plans to um, enhance security and then keep fighting with various stakeholders uh, keep collaborating with various stakeholders to secure these volatile regions mm. and you know security is actually very important we can't really say much about it though because most most times their plan is that in the pipeline or something yeah. that they want to execute so, so it's, it's a very dicey thing you mm -hmm. know we're very careful yes. about what to say about security mm -hmm. and then the government have shown much commitment to this but we will commend the tunubu administration even though they've been challenges in security aspects unrest in some part of the country but Nation. so far to some extent i think there is, is a general reduction or decline in the mm. intensity of this terror group right. attack what do you think would you say rather that there is a little progress well <laughs> like you said his works are commendable but i'll just leave it at that that there is more work to be done in the long run yeah, there is a lot of it yeah. at both um, the local, the grassroots, mm -hmm. and the top tier level. Yeah. So it's not like a progressive thing. It's not something you just do a day or um, twirl a magic wand and things happen. It's something that you have to be intentional about as a leader. Mm -hmm. So it's a continuous affair. Okay. Yeah. So still on Nigerian affairs, before we delve into global issues, you know, very recently we, we had what's recently a lot of nigerian young persons generally we are persons we are on social media talking about the instances of um, institutions like efcc and the uh, and the prisons that has been lately oh. under public scrutiny yes. from the handling oh. of the very recent case involving idris Okunue, known as bob Risky, Risky. and then mm -hmm. there is very dark man coming to house of rape or you know engage the committee in charge mm. that want to investigate this matter so what do you think about do you think um, the whole process is appropriate or rank or free or what do mm. you think about this okay so um right i know we saw the old back and forth on social media that um is that the house of a representative do not have work to do um why would they someone the or the committee invite, actually sorry the committee the yeah. rather the committee why would they invite 
you know, such people. So I'm going to come from the aspect of a legal person, one with legal background, right? So I had to, you know, go into the constitution and to check, you know, just to be sure, just to fact check. And I saw that, you know, the House of Representatives actually have the right, you know, to invite or someone a citizen, any Nigerian citizen, or, you know, an entity, right? You know, just to ask, you know, for inquire. investigation, to inquire. And if you look at it, well, this, this whole issue or matter has to do with certain government agencies, right? Yes. And so that Our instituted by, by law. these lawmakers, lawmakers right? Yes. So it is very essential that they do their own due diligence. They're able to call the parties involved and make you know, inquiries and investigate further about it. So the issue might now then be that in carrying out your duty, why are you, why, are, why is it all over on social media, right? Um, some people have, that, I think that's where the concern is from, like right? People, attention. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the citizens might not have that much information about, okay, this, this is what the law states about this, you know, about this, this, and this, and they are right about this. So it, it, it's their normal work, right? It's, it is their, they're carrying, it, out their exact, they're carrying out their function. They do not understand, but on the flip side, people are wondering, why are you, why, why are you bringing it out on social media to let us know you're inviting these people over for, you know, investigation? Shouldn't it be your normal, you know, day-to-day -day activity or what? So actually, part of actually it. their day-to-day -day activity is always <laughs> done you know, in public. Um, I it's feel, not, I feel not them security. coming out, you get, mm -hmm. them coming out to publicize it or televise it is more like a double-edged sword in the sense that if it's not being televised and mm -hmm. people don't see, they will mm -hmm. say they are not transparent enough. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. If it's being televised, they say it's too loud. So mm -hmm. what you do is that everyone sees it. Yeah. Fine, it's televised, it has been done. Mm -hmm. And the lawmakers, in their standing and authority, they have the right, every right to do that, to yeah. invite all parties involved. Precisely. Because these people are the ones like creating the laws for mm -hmm. these institutions to yeah. stand by. Mm -hmm. So the public should be informed enough that these lawmakers have the standing rights yeah. to do what they did. Precisely. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Ladies, let's delve into global issues. <laughs> now, um, I Your don't know. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, global issues. You know, you, can you compare? I want to hear your thoughts. The the presidential debate okay. between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, and mm -hmm. then the vice presidential debate mm -hmm. between Tim Walz, the okay. vice presidential candidate to Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. and then Senator J. D. Vance, to the vice presidential to candidate President to uh, Trump. Trump. Now, I want to I want you to compare and contrast the style of their debates. Okay. You know, <laughs> um, so I, I think basically, yeah. So you know, before now we've come on, you know, set to discuss about or to even caution, right, Kamala and Trump. If you are coming <laughs> out to debate, the <laughs> 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 you know, I said before now we have come to you know discuss okay. about their debates, right? And I think that one major thing for us, concerns for us, were the fact that they were coming out to is it outleash their own personal grievances right rather than actually debate you know the essence or address yes. the issues you know of, of the citizens there. or the people that they intend to govern right so if we come down to their vice president i think what we we, we, we saw professionalism in what they did in their approach in empathy in, exactly empathy mutual respect Right. And so they actually came for the business of the day. They didn't come to throw jamboree or what, what do we call it now <laughs> at each other. They didn't come with personal grievances or their political um, reservations. Right. They came to address the needs of the people and the issues. You know, they came to tell us what we really want to hear. These are the issues. This is what you and, and the fact that they were able to, um, you know, debate and, you know, show their what, what do we call it now? Was it value? or their, their um, competence, right, through their debates, not coming to throw jamboree. Is it, I think that is it Bola's word now. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that's it. Yeah, okay. and that, that's really commended. But I think that everyone should learn from it. When you are coming, don't come and just 
throw tantrums. Please come and address the issues of the day, what we want to You make. know, um, to add to what Iniki just said, I feel they, they more like took notes mm. from, from what happened last mm. year. Mm. So everyone is trying to put their best foot forward. Yeah. You get this is politics. This is something you are trying to enter in position and you want to put your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. You understand? You do not want to like put yourself in a position of for critics yeah precisely. so uh, to me I, they took notes and they did their yeah, job and yeah. they did what they were supposed to, to do. do yes thank you Bola. I, sorry um, thank you Bola, for that so i think that one thing one take home <laughs> for, from from this is that no no one is an island right we all make mistakes but i think one thing that makes us you know humans. humans right is the fact that we come to the realization of our mistakes and then we now apply it moving forward so i think it's maybe the parties took note of all of these mistakes that they are let, let's just call it mistakes right they heard the concerns of the people and then they passed it on okay now it's your time to debate please ensure that all of these mistakes we made do not repeat again and, and you know and that's a it. good tone for leadership yeah. Yeah. able to correct the, the from the past on the light and do it is it's not good for uh, both the vice presidents and the the vice presidential candidate and the uh, presidential candidate will blow you hot at the same time. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's quite interesting that the both presidential candidates are very agile and mm -hmm. energetic. And, then you have to yeah. and, hurt, <laughs> and they will not have the advice trying to stabilize things. Okay, and in the end, American has to win. American people has to win. Yeah. And they have to decide who Ooh. wins, not by fighting themselves. So another issue of interest, the issue of Iran, I was going to come to you about this. Uh, you know what happened recently that Iran actually launched 200 mm -hmm. missiles to Israel. Uh, yeah, and although, fortunately for Israel, they had the technology like she David Sling, Iron Dome, them. and then the US Navy destroyer, this US Navy at sea was able to intercept most of these missiles and then knock them off, this, mm. off, the, off the sky. Few, they have few casualties. Maybe, I think so far, I don't think, uh, they have very few casualties and few destructions. But then, according to um, analysts and experts, they said, it costs millions of dollars to actually, to actually pull that the out. money Iran spent in launching those missiles. Those missiles cost Iran some millions of dollars. Same with Israel. The money they spent in, in shooting down those, like, you know, this war is going to cause serious economic catastrophe in Iran. So I want to hear your take on this. Okay. From your um, the, and, uh, diplomatic analysis on these issues from uh, um, Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, Lebanon, and Israel. Okay. First of all, this thing is more like moving towards the trajectory of regional war mm. when we are talking on the case of Israeli and Hamas. Now, um, some days ago, I think it's more like attack and retaliation. Is this is more like the attack and retaliation case because mm -hmm. first, I think um, the Israelis, the Hezbollah, they attacked. Then it's more like Israeli created a ground war and killed their their leader that's um hassan nasrallah or something like that so it's more like a case of iran retaliating that i am defending my ally mm. you get this is you know international politics or international game is played like this we are allies mm. no one country fights a war alone mm. when it comes to international war one for all, all for one exactly so it's more like I have allies and I have enemies mm. you understand I have to defend my allies for my allies to understand that I am for them and they too can stand for me it's mm. more like a game of give and take you mm. understand that's how international politics even any politics that's how it works so um, according to um, the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu he was saying something that this is made a statement that is striking and he said that it is, they are going to pay for it. They made a huge mistake and they are going to pay for it. Hmm. So you see that spells, in, when you are used to international politics, international relations and all that, that spells like it's beyond a threat. It's more mm -hmm. like you are going to pay for what you did. Mm -hmm. So this is going, I'm sorry to say that this is going to turn into a full regional war mm -hmm. if care is not taken. If diplomatic, so, so now um, what, what about this taken, issue of um, the UN being you know, various uh, experts are saying that the UN has not really done the, the effects or the presence of the United Nations in resolving this issue is not really felt. To the extent that the Israeli people, I think the Israeli foreign minister has already declared that the 
the current Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, should, should be grant should be uh, the status of a, a personnel non grata. That means he's not welcome to his race. But I rather have because I know the UN General Secretary General has yes, international yes, immunity. Yes. He, should also, immunity. he should also understand that United Nations, like the name implies, is made up of nation states yeah. who are also protecting their, their interests. interests. Their interests yeah. Israel precisely. has good defense systems. Israel is not small. So is Iran. <laughs> Iran has you get good uh, military arsenal yeah. and all that. So you need to like think, even if your enemy or your friend's enemy, mm -hmm. you get, you have to, as an ally, you have to defend, you have to also think about yourself yeah. as a country. Mm -hmm. You know, majority of the West, they have interests spread across the Precisely. world. Yeah. They are thinking like, you are thinking, you, are, you have multilateral thinking. Mm -hmm you get as a world power. You have mm -hmm. to think on different perspectives, mm -hmm. both on economic um, implication, mm -hmm. military, you mm -hmm. get international yeah. implications. So they too are protecting their, their states. Yeah. Even they are trying to like prefer peace, you get support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's more like preferring support from a distance. Mm -hmm. That's why I yes, see it. Yeah. So basically that's the way I see it. Okay, so another thing now is, uh, what, what do you think is the path forward in this? Like, if we, you know, in the end now, we need to consider innocent women and children. And children, mm -hmm. That yes. have been killed in mm -hmm. this world. There are some of these instances where, even same with Russia, Ukraine, a lot of women, like that day there was a video of a pregnant woman that was being evacuated from a mm -hmm. yes. hospital in Ukraine when they launched a missile. So, we're talking about Israel, Hezbollah, Hamas, Lebanon, Iran war. On the other hand, we are talking about uh, Russia, Ukraine. Russia, yeah. Ukraine. Like, when is this going to end? Because <laughs> yeah, true. we are looking yeah, about humanities so, uh, that we are no, 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 coming, no. except they come from a place of humanness where yeah. all part parties involved are ready, are yeah, willing to nice. put an end to this thing. And also, like you said, the United Nations also have a role to play mm. in the case of conflict resolution and, and diplomatic yeah, and dialogue. Yeah. So, there should be a diplomatic dialogue. Then again, are these people willing? create this dialogue or make it happen okay i think world leaders we just employ our world leaders we call on them that mm -hmm. they should be committed to humanitarian uh processes then again, then things then, like um, economic military sanctions could be used yeah, but, but then but if you everything military, should be there towards humanitarian if you are using military sanctions humanitarian then crisis. you are calling for a war and well, most likely they will not use a military sanction economic mm. sanction i think that's what most economic are. is well is the game they can play fine but military i think they have they will have a problem with that. Okay, so I'm going to bring up another issue of um, concern now, away from the uh, Middle East. Let's come to Africa. Okay. Now, recently in South Africa, there have been an instance where two women, uh, so we, they actually went, I think from the story I gathered from the relevant sources, yeah. these women with, I think, one of the husbands of one of the women, they actually went in search for food in a mm. farm. And in, in South Africa, most of this big farmland, I mean, commercial farmers, farm wealthy farmers are mostly white okay you understand the whites in south Af in south africa and then these women black of course they went with uh, the other women so, uh, about three or four of them went in search for food hung they were hungry and then of course it's it's hunger that drives them right hunger and poverty and they went to search for food and then they went to a certain farm because they, there's this allegation of their farmers association all these complaining that these people were always coming People always come into their farmland to steal food and other items, mm. and I feel there is other better ways to resolve it. And these particular women, they were shot. In fact, they were shot at in the process. The other man escaped, but the two women, I think, they were killed in the process, or maybe they didn't actually die totally at the instance of the being shot. They were not maybe actually dead. But what what later happened was that the owners of this farmland, the owner and his uh, staff, they took these women and fed them to the pig. The, uh, the pigs actually fed on them and they died. They ate, the pig ate these women up <laughs> in a bit to cover up their... Yeah, wild pigs to, to cover, cover up the, the crime. crime. Or I would call it a crime. Because killing someone is actually is criminal. Crime. Premeditated yeah, murder. Yeah. Yes. Now, the man that escaped went to inform relevant uh, authorities. authorities. They came around and they arrested them. And then these people wanted to be granted bill. But South Africans came out and said, no bill. No bill. So, so now, this issue of... Um, uh, it's, it's, it's racially inspired from what we see. So what do you think about this issue? Okay, you know, I'm going, come, apartheid. I'm going to come in is this still existing? I'm going to come in this slide that there is what they call um, silent apartheid in mm. um, South Africa now. 
you know, there's this thing, there's this tactic um, the enemy use against you to isolate you, to keep you in a kind of uh, mental and physical isolation so that people who are in a position to be of help cannot. Now, um, the original South Africa, I'm talking about the indigenous uh, South Africans mm -hmm. here, the Khoisan, the Zulu, the Kosa, and the rest. They, they, um, they tend to suffer from this trauma. You get this trauma of appetite, of what appetite like entrusted on them over mm -hmm. time. So they, are, they have, I see it as more like unresolved over time. They don't have it resolved. They are still suffering it. It's now transgenerational for them. Even the children they will give birth to is still suffering from that. You understand? Yeah. Something that they didn't experience. From, so exactly. That's why I said it's transgenerational. You learn some habits. You learn some ideas. It's been passed down most times. So it's been passed down to them. Now, these people, these so-called um, whites that are there, they don't see them as, they see them as less of a human in their own land. It's so less of a human for you to kill someone and feed them to your to pigs. pigs. That means you never rated that person in the At first all. place. You never rated that set of people, that race, in mm. there in the first place. Can you kill a fellow white person and feed them to your pigs? Mm. Except, of course, it's maybe politically... Um, politically um, inclined or maybe econ or maybe it has to do with money or something else but this one as you, like you said is more like racial racially inclined you understand it's pushed towards racism and all that so they are not seen mm -hmm. as a player in their own country in their birth land huh. you understand so it's a problem first what i would advise is South Africa has to heal themselves. Nobody's coming to heal you yeah. mm -hmm. from, your, from your traumas. Mm -hmm. Nobody's okay. coming to heal you. You have to heal yourself. You have to embrace other blacks as well. Could that be a reason yeah. why xenophobia it's seems to be... It's part of it. It's part. You are scared of people coming in because of what one has done because to you. Because of trauma. Because of trauma. trauma of it's past. more like... It's more, it's, it boils down to um, different... Across different sectors and points. Take, for instance, let's say gender. Maybe um, a woman has been harassed by a man and other men are now looking like demons. It's the same thing. You have to heal mm. from that trauma first. And the reverse is also true. The reverse is true. <laughs> you have to. That they will balance. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> the reverse is true. The same thing goes with men. Mm -hmm. You have to heal from that unresolved trauma, that past trauma, so you can deal with things rationally. You get and see things from a better perspective. Mm. There is another issue in South Africa too that is also a, an issue in Nigeria. Now, there is what we call silent no. No means no. Mm. Some women also were protesting in South Africa that I, I think the, the courts in South Africa, I think it was it their Supreme Court also, have opposed that no means no. Issue of sexual violence. Sexual violence, I mean. mm -hmm. yes. So when you hear no, it's no. Yeah. Don't do further. Mm -hmm. Even if they know it's silent mm -hmm. or quiet yeah. or, or not very intense. And same thing too, I think uh, the legal state government yeah, yeah. is much it's interested in this issue of sexual yeah. violence. And yeah. So what yeah. do you yes. think about gender-based violence, sexual violence, rape and all those stuff dealing well, with them? you know, it's what we've been saying before now. We keep talking about, you know, sexual violence, sexual harassment. And of course, that every, you know, everyone that is found guilty should be brought to the books right so we've talked about proper enforcement of laws so when one person says that okay i did this i harassed someone or sexually violated someone you know and we've seen precedents of people who have been punished right for doing such it is it is very essential that we keep up with enforcement so that you can also teach other people a lesson not to to carry out that act all right, thank you. Before we move on to the last segment, I think there is this last story from Mali. Uh, Nigerians in diaspora, you know, this issue of the thank God to the commitment of the president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is committed to helping or assisting Nigerians in everywhere. Every Nigerian stranded in other countries should be released and sent back, or you know, and supported to be sent back to Nigeria. Now, there's this issue of um, some Nigerian women, a video that was trending where some women we are seeing in the prison in Mali, in a certain prison in Mali. Mm. And then uh, these women, according to that video, one of the women was alleging that they have been uh, there, some of them has been there for five years, some have been there for 10 years, some mm. have been there for two That's years, sad. without trial. Mm. And you and I know that most times, some of these Nigerians just travel 
for the sake of greener, in search of greener pastures. Yes. Yes. Because of our oh, energetic sorry. level, yes. they might get involved in some one infraction or the other, or yeah. maybe little or nothing. It might even be differences. It like could just be misunderstanding. And, 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 and then the next thing, they were arrested. Not that they didn't, they might not actually commit any crime. Maybe it's not really a criminal offense. Yeah. It could just be something that could be looked over. But they took these people, locked them up. They've been there for long without trial. And then the, go, uh, the Nigerian uh, diaspora, the Nigerian diaspora commission, the chairman, uh, sure. Abika Dabiri, she has stated her commitment to want to do something about it. But mm -hmm. she was emphasizing that Nigerians should try to try to um, understand sure. okay. and tread cautiously when they travel to other countries. Mm -hmm. So I think what do you think about uh, negotiations, national imagery and Nigerians seeking to get greener pasture? Because sometimes the grass is not always greener on the other side. side. You know, <laughs> like, um, like most times we tend to emphasize there are some things I won't say here you get because I'm still patriotic. Yeah. So um, the mode of traveling, one, matters a lot. Mm. The reason for traveling, two, is another one oh, factor to consider. Mm. You cannot leave your country to another country on illegal grounds and expect protection most mm. times. You get, you have to dance to the music either ways. Mm. You understand? So what I'm trying to say is that Okay, that's aside from, um, let's say, the immigrants' side. Let's go to the government. Mm -hmm. No, Nigeria has not have like, they've not had this uh, very strong um, international negotiations when it comes to their citizens mm. to defend them, to take them out. You see countries like America, countries yeah. like England, you cannot mess up with their citizens different, on different they soils. Will, they, will they will fight, they need, because they feel... <laughs> They are citizen. Every citizen is more like a projection of your power. Yeah. If you dis if you can just it's, lo it's more like you having children and mm -hmm. someone can just treat your child anyhow, anyhow. and it means it can the person can you. go scot free. Yeah. That means you are accessible. That yeah. means you can be conquered. Mm. You understand. So yeah. that is another point of view. Our government should start seeing things that your citizen is more like a projection of your asset. power. Mm -hmm. It's an asset. Yeah. And you need to protect them likewise. And also the citizens, your mode of traveling. You cannot expect to endanger your life and mm -hmm. be protected. Yeah. Okay. You understand? So, so it be. just comes from different angles. Yeah. Mm. Your thoughts? Well, I think that Bola has, has said it all. And just like she said, there's some things we would not like to say, you know, on air. So, yeah. Okay. Fine. Uh, well, uh, what I'm going to say is that uh, Nigerians, I'm not going to say you should not travel if you need to travel. But if you must travel, do things properly. Do travel things right. Properly. And again, more importantly, the grass is not always green at your mm. Nigeria is a great nation. We may have challenges in leadership and management yeah. and other issues. But you see, if people strive to build countries, we can also strive to build our own country. Let's yeah. focus on Nigeria and see how we can develop our country. And if you must travel, do things right. Travel and as I a think it also boils down do to patriotism right. as well. And don't, don't always get into trouble. We should not always be waiting till we get into trouble. I'm waiting for. It's either the government is sending APs to come and pick them <laughs> or, or sending it's like a strategy <laughs> now. No, I'm just saying, but, uh, but on the more serious note, like it's always Nigeria that's getting into trouble. I mean, I mean, yeah, other countries too, they have these challenges, citizens mm. of I'm talking of but our own country. Seen the loudest. What happened in between the, the Sudan? You know, what happened now? The crisis in Sudan, where Nigerians were. Uh, those Nigerians were, some of them were evacuated, mm. but they had difficulties reporting. leaving Sudan. Those were, the same thing with Ethiopia. Um, uh, sorry. They wanted to go into Ethiopia so that they can be able to you know, find their way. Finally. It was difficult. So, like, we should always try our best to make sure we hold our banner, raise it high anywhere yeah. we are proud of as Nigerian citizens and also do the right thing. We should always be found wanting by the law when yeah. we are out there. At the same time, let's try to and make our country good. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you very much, ladies, for your thoughts. And I feel that the world leaders too should try to do things that are going to be helpful to world and humanitarian development. Balaya is next after the break. Do stay with us. <laughs>